Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Our guest today is the legend himself, Willem Middlecope, author of The Big Reset and founder of Commodity Discovery Fund. Welcome back, Willem. Great to be back. Lots yeah, happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always a pleasure having you back and to talk about the markets and everything that's happening with uh, with the BRICS nations, gold, silver, and everything else. I think one of the one of the biggest questions out there uh, right now is, have we made it through the worst of the banking crisis? What's concerning you in the market right now, Willem? I think the banking crisis was um, resolved pretty quickly. So central banks have been able to solve each and every crisis by just actually printing money. <laughs> uh, but there's one crisis we can't fix um, by printing money, and that's the inflation. <laughs> we yeah. can't fix inflation, higher interest rates by uh, by printing money. So I think um, <laughs> in the next few years, we might enter a, a crisis, periods of crisis where the central banks are not able to 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 stop it and and that's 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 worrying and and that's where things get real serious yeah well you see the debt servicing on the 32 trillion is north for the interest is just going to be north of a trillion dollars a year so how crazy is that and how unsustainable is that willem when you have the interest cost on that 32 trillion just uh going through the roof how unsustainable is that yeah, and and that, that's for the for the government budget. But look what happens with your budget or your neighbors. <laughs> oh yeah, who have to pay their mortgages or uh, reset on their mortgages after three or five years. So I think um, there's a lot of stress building in the system. There's a lot of stress building, uh, especially in the in the real estate market, especially the commercial real estate market. And and I, I think um, the central bankers are just waiting <laughs> to see what will break next, and then right. they'll, they'll need to make their next move. And the next move might be a pause in raising interest rates, and then you can expect they need to lower interest rates, or you can expect they need to start QE again. Mm -hmm. And the banking crisis of of what was it February this year was mm -hmm. solved by printing money as well, but. It, it, it's printing money in 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 a hidden uh, in a hidden way. Uh, it's not that obvious, but if you look at the balance sheet, you can find it there at the Federal Reserve. Yeah, and you, we all know that the Federal Reserve, watching them for the past couple of years, they're very reactionary. So anything they see, they'll just uh, react to it. But moving on to uh, gold and silver, there's lots of news uh, recently about the BRICS nations and them moving away from uh, you know the standard U.S. dollar and the U.S. Uh, petrol dollar. But it's been kind of used to weaponize. Uh, the U.S. dollar has been used basically as uh, as a weapon against countries that uh, don't go their way or don't uh, align with their interests. So what what's new with the BRICS nations? What do you see there? What's concerning you there, Willem? I think it's quite significant that we had this BRICS conference and, and, and we learned that they were at, they invited six countries to join the BRICS alliance. And, and I, I don't think these countries are named uh, without their approval. So when they say the Saudis are invited, it means that the Saudis um, <laughs> will really um, join them next year. And of course, we've had these rumors in the last few months that the Saudis might uh, be willing to join the BRICS alliance. And that's highly significant because the BRICS alliance could turn up to be like a new OPEC. You know, they control almost half of world's oil production. Wow. And, and we all have... Um, of, of some of us might remember the footage, I think it was from 2019 during the G20 conference uh, when MBS, uh, the leader uh, of Saudi Arabia, made his high five with uh, Putin. Putin. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. With, with Trump in the back. And, and we were all surprised. So why were they joking that way? And, and now we know that President Xi and President Putin have met up um, over 40 times uh, uh, face to face to discuss all these changes and both uh, Russia and China, both leaders have made several statements that they are working on, on a whole new plan and I think wow. President Xi has a longer term vision and um, the, well he, he's shown uh, his cards now and 
this this I think when we look back five or ten years from now, we'll say this is all very um, this this was all very significant and. Uh, of course, I wrote the book, The Big Reset in 2013. Yes. Well, this yeah. is reset stuff. And you're absolutely right. You nailed it. And you look at uh, what you said there recently. They have uh, the people in the West have a short term vision like the politicians because they only serve for three, four years and then they move on. Uh, you know, uh, Xi Jinping and Putin, they're there for 30, 40 years. They're there for a long time. So they have a long term vision. And uh, what you said there absolutely nails it with this BRIC nations. Do you think they can actually pull through and be successful with uh, sort of destabilizing or moving away from the U.S. dollar? Like, look what happened to Iraq. Look what happened to Libya. Anyone who tries to move away from the U.S. dollar or the U.S. petrol dollar, there's eventually war. Uh, do you think there'll um, just be a bigger war next year if they do pull? Like, if Saudi Arabia says, that's it, no more U.S. petrol dollar. Well, it, yeah, there, there's there's a war ongoing against Russia. Yeah, um, that that that's in the Ukraine, yeah. and the US the US made it quite clear that they're willing to take on China. <laughs> Several generals or ex generals have, have said we need to prepare for war. And remember, President Xi he told his generals prepare for war. So uh, the U.S. won't go down without a fight, but don't expect a collapse of the dollar system within 12 months. This yeah. all takes time. And the dollar world trade is still done in dollars for 90%. But if you look at world trade in renminbi, it's now almost 5%. And that was um, just 1% a few years ago. So uh, the BRICS countries, uh, China as, as its leader, are getting stronger. And when they really... Uh, are able to unite. I think they they each each country of the BRICS has its own priorities, has its own agenda. Um, but I think they are united in their criticism on the Western financial system. They're fed up with Western double standards. They're fed up with Western hi hypocrisy. Yeah. Um, they understand that the West have been exploiting the rest of the world for maybe a few hundred years. <laughs> and, and now they understand it's a numbers game. The, the, the BRICS uh, GDP um, is larger than G G7 GDP. And if you look wow. at people living in the BRICS countries, that's, that's a few billion people. And the Western Alliance is just 1.5 billion people. And don't forget, you have these 140 countries who didn't join us uh, in applying sanctions to, to, to Russia. So 140 countries, all countries in the Middle America, Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, and most countries in Asia, they don't have sanctions on Russia. And absolutely. Uh, they're fed up with the, 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 the double standards. Yeah, absolutely. You nailed it. And what happens to gold and silver and precious metals? Like we we're talking in the beginning of the interview uh, about QE, eventually that the Fed, if uh, they're reactionary, so they're going to see something, they're waiting for something to break, and then they're going to probably have to turn on the money printer again. What happens when they do pause or pivot? Will will gold take off the second they pause or will it be like a, a, a big lag like in the 70s? What, what do you see? Well, of course, everything moves in cycles, and uh, we've had a, a real bottom for, for precious metals and commodities early 2016. We had a retest of that bottom in March 2020 during the COVID crash. And I think we're in the very uh, first um, inning of, of a longer boom market for gold and commodities. And let me point to what Zoltan Pozar wrote. He um, used to work with the Federal Reserve was a uh, strategist and analyst with Credit Suisse. He just started his own shop mm. and he wrote a few uh, brilliant pieces of research just after the start of the Ukraine war. And the title of his first piece is We're Witnessing the Start of Bretton Woods 3.0. And of wow. course, Bretton Woods 1.0 was 1944, the start of the US dollar system. Uh, Bretton Woods 2.0 was uh, um, 1971 when Brixton took the dollar off the gold standard. And, and he says this is the start of a new monetary system coming from the East centered around gold and commodities. So when he is right, and I think he is right, and what happened last week uh, or this week in, in Johannesburg with the BRICS conference it is, it, it is a sign that um, I think gold and commodities will become more important. So it's uh, actually the BRICS system is a reaction on our 
fiat paper money system centered around US treasuries. So when mm -hmm. they build a new system centered around gold and commodities, that will then things get very interesting, especially for commodity investors like ourselves. Yeah. What do you do exactly at commodity discovery funds and how important is it uh, when like what, what do you look at before you even start investing in, let's say, a mining company or wh whatever you're looking at lithium? Uh, how important is it uh, to go through a strategy? Well, I always had this uh, vision since the early 2000s that we would see a decline of the of our paper paper dollar system one day. And and I was was very interested to hedge my own net worth. I made some money in real estate in the 1990s by um, investing in gold and silver and other hard assets. And after I bought some physical uh, precious metals uh, early in the 2000s and started to research this more and worked on my first book, which came out in 2007, I, I decided it would be very interesting to start investing in smaller companies who have large resources and reserves mm -hmm. in gold, silver, but also copper, nickel, zinc, the, the battery metals and uranium. So we, what we do and with our fund, we pool money uh, from high net worth individuals. We have some 150 million Canadian under management, and we invest that in the top 100 of a most significant but still undeveloped mining projects worldwide. So mm -hmm. we own we own a lot of stuff in the ground. We take mm -hmm. positions in these listed companies, and, and it has been a tough time because uh, the valuations in the mining space have been uh, so 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 low in the last few years. But now the market seems to have bottomed. We had this double bottom in 2020, so we see very strong inflow flow into our funds and. I think the next few years or even a few decades, uh, we'll see a, a strong bull market in commodities and, and in precious metals. Mm -hmm. Historically, right now, uh, this time of the month uh, around this year, do you see like a lot of people in our Wall Street silver, they say usually the mining stocks move first before the actual silver price. Uh, do you agree with that historically? Like, is that what you're seeing? Well, it's more that the major uh, producers like right. Newman and Barrick, tend to move first before uh, the gold price starts to move. If you look at the graphs of Newman and Barrick, they look awful now. So that, <laughs> that clearly shows we're near bottom. If you look at, at the precious metals um, markets from Elliott Wave perspective, I think uh, this correction is almost over. And then you can expect the royalty companies and major producers to start moving up very strongly first. And then... Uh, the junior market, uh, the junior mining names might might follow, but this move could be quite explosive because we've had uh, such a long correction after this very strong year in 2020 when our fund was up uh, 85 percent. So I think there's a lot of energy building in these markets. And don't forget when these markets change. We've seen that in 2016. We've seen that um, in, in March 2020. When the sellers are exhausted, there are no sellers anymore. You have, just have buyers. And these right. markets are quite illiquid. So stocks will jump with 10, 20, 30%. In 2020, we had five months, five months of double-digit returns uh, back to back. So wow. um, I expect a similar move. Uh, maybe pretty soon because the mark, market is really uh, getting quite exhausted. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we would love to, uh, it's, a, it's such a pleasure having you come down to talk to Wall Street Silver about uh, the market and everything that you're seeing in the future. Uh, but we would love to have you back on in the next two to three months, Willem, just to see what happens with silver and gold. And we'll see what Powell does. Do they pause and uh, or do they keep going? And what's interesting, what you should watch, because you're Wall Street Silver, yes. silver was leading during the rally uh, last year. Uh, silver seems to be leading again. We saw a breakout of the short-term downtrend of silver uh, this week first, and then gold followed. Yeah. So um, silver is almost like a leading indicator for the precious metals and the mining space. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be watching it closely. So thank you so much, Willem, for coming down to Wall Street Silver, and a uh, huge pleasure having you come down. Enjoy your weekend. Awesome. You too. Take care.